Today, let's have a look at how to do some scrolly telling. We're starting at base camp. We're here on Mount Shasta. We're following this path all the way up, going to Lake Helen. Now we're up to Red Banks, Misery Hill, and we're at our summit. This is accomplished using GSAP with motion path and scroll trigger. And I'm going to show you how to get it all set up in Webflow right now. Hey there, Webbay. Okay, first thing is we're gonna get our image from Google Earth Pro. Now we need a really high resolution image. This thing's actually gonna be in 8K. So to do that, you'll get this, uh, you click this little button here in Google Earth Pro. This is the save icon. And then on map options, I'm gonna disable all of these. Scaling's 100%, gonna keep it on there. Resolution, I wanna keep that at 8K UHD. and gonna click save image here. And this is gonna take a little while, but we'll just save it as just 8K. Uh, as a JPEG. All right, it's gonna tell you the image is being prepared. This may take a minute. It took me definitely a couple minutes for this to complete. All right, once you've got your image, you wanna load it up in Photoshop and you could actually use some other tool for this, but all I'm really gonna do is export as a JPEG. And I need to make sure this is under the four megabyte file limit for Webflow. So 3.3 would be great. And I'm gonna go ahead and export that. And I'll just call it something like Shasta 8K compressed. All right, so I just brought the image here into Illustrator and I've used my curvature tool to draw this stroke path. It's just going up here, you know, a couple dots that I made. And then I set the stroke, uh, let's see, I made it five points with a nice little round cap and I made it a dashed line. That's really all I did and then I set the color. And the next thing you're going to wanna do is go to File, Save As. And let's save this, make sure you're saving it locally, not to the cloud, go to SVG here and click save and you're gonna get this little dialog box. You're gonna click SVG code and this is the code of the SVG that we want. So we'll just go ahead and highlight all this and copy that and now we're gonna bring this into Webflow. All right, we're here in Webflow now. I've got my basic project set up. Uh, let's do the embed first though and then I'll walk you through everything else that we have. So just gonna drop an embed under this image wrap and I'm gonna copy or not copy, I'm gonna paste that code that I got from Adobe Illustrator and you can see it's got a couple classes here and then it has two, let's see, three paths. Now I don't need this path. I don't need this path. I just want the longest path really. Not sure what all these other ones are doing. You can keep them if you want, but this is important because we're gonna add an ID equal to, equal to mountain path here. Okay, the other thing we need to do is we need to change this image here. Like this is just pointing at something locally on our system. So I'll go ahead and save and close this. You can see our path is here, but our image still doesn't exist. So let's come into the asset manager. We're gonna upload from desktop a Shasta 8K compressed. This is probably gonna take a minute to load up. All right, that's all loaded. Let's make sure that we use the AI alt text extension to get free alt text for this thing. Boom, a large Rocky Mountain, pretty good alt text. And you can see it's kind of, it's warning us that it's very large, but that's okay. This is a big uh, hero image that we want to display. And we're also going to zoom in on it. So something else to consider. Okay, we'll close that out. And now we're going to click this little icon here and we'll get the link to our hosted image, come back. And we're going to go back into our embed and drop that in the href spot right here. So paste that, save and close. And now you can see we have our image here. However, some things we want to set up are on the HTML embed, we want this to actually be the same size as the image. So let's go in here and what is it? 8192 by 4320. So on the embed, I'm gonna set a width of 8192 pixels and a height of 4320 pixels. Now you can see it's all jacked up, but that's okay. The code is gonna take care of everything. So don't worry too much about that. Let's explore what I have going on for the rest of the project. So we have our HTML embed and that's here. We, we've taken care of that. We have our image wrap. This is position fixed, which of course means it's gonna, if you just highlight here, fixed position is an element relative browser window. So it stays in place as the page is scrolled. You could also probably get by doing something by setting this like to sticky and stick to the top and then set this to relative. But I found this fixed was the best way to get everything to stick together. All right, and then within that, I have this uh, class of track. This is set to 500 viewport heights so that we have some distance to scroll. You could change this you know, higher or lower based on how much scrolling you want the user to do to get from the start to the finish. And then I have a content, and this is also fixed. This is overlaid on top of everything. Notice I have a higher Z index. It's set to 100% of the viewport width and 100 viewport heights so that it covers the whole screen. And then within that, I have my lower text sections here and my heading wrap. And then all that's just under a page wrapper 
which also has the uh, width and height of 100%. So we just want to make sure that this thing takes up the whole page. Now, looking at the lower text wrap, this is position absolute set to the bottom left with a little bit of margin on the left and right, or I guess I should say uh, this is left property and the bottom property. And then within that, we have these four lower texts. The first one is going to be position static, and then I'm just setting all the text properties that I want here. And then the next two, I have this combo class of absolute, and this is just so that the first one takes up space and the rest of the other ones are going to lay on top of it. And then we'll use a Webflow interaction to make those come in and off the screen as well as change their opacity. Nothing interesting going on with heading wrap here, just a normal heading. And then lastly, let's check out, I have this circle. Circle is set to position absolute and I'm hard coding a width and height of two rem. It's set to a Z index of nine so that it shows on top and I've given it a color and some border radius of 50%. And then I also have a page load interaction called pulse. This is just setting our circle pulse kind of animation so that the user has something fun to look at rather than just a static dot following the path. Lastly, we'll have a look at our page settings by clicking the gear icon here and seeing what scripts we're loading up. I'm using a couple libraries from GSAP. You can see I have GSAP min. I have, so this is just GSAP core. I have scroll trigger and I have motion path plugin. The GSAP installation docs will help you build that up. If I come to the install helper, you can see I have scroll trigger and motion path checked. And then I just copy and pasted these into my project. The last script I have is a code sandbox file. So let's hop into the code now and have a look at what's going on. All right, here in code sandbox, we see that we're adding an event listener for DOM content loaded. And then we're going to run this init function as soon as that happens. So all of our code is going to be inside this init function here. We'll start by registering the motion path and scroll trigger plugins. And now we're going to focus on animating the circle class along the path that has the ID of mountain path. I'm going to call gsap.2 and we know that gsap.2 takes an element to animate and that's going to be this ID of circle. I said a class of circle up here, but if we come back to, if you go back in Webflow, you'll see that I also added an ID of circle to the circle class as well. Now gsap.2 takes a options object and now we're going to pass the options that we want to look at. The first one is motion path that takes its own options object. And within that, we're going to find the path that has the ID of mountain path. We're going to call this align property and also pass it the ID of mountain path. This magically aligns the circle class to the ID of mountain path. Uh, this is really great because they actually both exist in different coordinate spaces and we want those to match. And GSAP does all of that fancy math for us. Next, we'll set the align origin property to 5050. And this is just so that we center the circle. Otherwise, it would align it to the top left of the circle. And we'll set this auto rotate property to true. This is really not applicable for a circle. This is just if you're, if the object that you're animating actually had a direction to it, like sort of a, like a compass kind of triangle or something, then you, it would auto align to the path. Uh, we don't need it, but I pretty much always include it. All right, next we have scroll trigger property. To that, we're gonna pass an empty options object that we're gonna fill with the trigger, which we want to pass that the class of track. So as we're scrolling, that's the thing that scroll trigger is watching for. Next, we're gonna set the start to top top, and this can be translated to when the top of our track element is at the top of the viewport. And we're gonna set the end to bottom bottom. This can be translated to when the bottom of track is at the bottom of the viewport. Lastly, we'll set scrub equal to one, and this just connects the whole thing to the user scroll. We'll finish off by adding an ease of none because we just want this to happen as users scrolling. We don't want to add any easy effects to the scroll. Okay, the next thing we need to accomplish with our code is to move our element with the image wrap class so that it actually follows the circle because we're zooming in and we're making sure that that tracks the circle. We use ticker.add to accomplish this. This is a function that GSAP has that runs basically every animation frame. And we can just give that a gsap.2 animation that looks at our image wrap element and positions it based on the circle's coordinates. So we've got gsap.ticker.add, open close parentheses. And within that, we're gonna pass a function. So this is just an anonymous function that I define by op more open close parentheses. And then I give that fat arrow syntax. And that is gonna return an animation, that gsap.2 animation. Now we wanna pass that our class of image wrap so that gsap finds that. And then we'll give it another options object here. We're going to fill that with duration. So for we're going to add like a nice little uh, time delay for the image to catch up to the circle. You could increase or decrease this if you want, but we also want to set our properties. So we're going to set the X position of image wrap and we're going to set it to the property, the X property of circle. And to do that, we use this gsap.get property circle X are the two variables that we pass to this. 
And then we're going to negate that because we want our image wrap to move in the opposite direction. We're going to do the same thing with the Y value. And finally, we want to make sure that we center the wrapper using the left and top properties on initial load and any resize of the browser. So to do that, we'll call window on load equals window on resize, and we'll pass that an anonymous function. Within that anonymous function, we're going to call gsap.set. We're going to pass that our image wrap class and an empty options object. And we'll set the left property to window.inner width divide by two. And we'll set the top property to window.inner height divide by two. Now, if I save, that's really all we have to write for our code. And we refresh. And now we've got our little circle scrolling along our path. And we've got uh, these lower thirds text titles coming up too. If you want to see how I did those, let's hop back into Webflow here. And we'll come to track. So you notice track, I have an interaction. We come over to the interactions pane and I have wall scrolling in view, this show subtitles. And if I click the gear icon, it's just a bunch of opacity, oops, just a bunch of opacity changes and move. So for example, we have our first lower text. This is the one that says base camp. It's gonna start with an opacity of 100% and it's gonna start with a move of 0%. And then at 6% scroll, it's going to go to 0% opacity and 100% in the Y direction so that it ends up down here. Now next, we're gonna get the second lower text and you can see I've got a whole block of them here. We start with opacity at zero and move at 100%. And then we're just gonna animate that opacity from or to 100% and the move to 0% so that it's locked in position now. And we'll set the opacity, this is just keeping the opacity at 100% and the move at 0% for about 4% uh, of the animation frame here. And then opacity back down to zero and move it down to 100% so that it's down below here. And I'm just doing that with the rest of our lower thirds titles there. This is where the bulk of your scrolly telling would probably happen, but we've got everything animating and showing, and that is it that I have for this one. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, be sure to like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one. Peace. Yeah.